So guys, um, some of you are asking me, right, that how do I start revising for the UCAT test? You know, what are some key things I need to understand when it comes to revision uh, for the UCAT test? Um, as you can imagine, right, um, I do full day courses uh, for Blue Peanut and we look at all these UCAT sections, um, strategies and so forth in extreme detail, right, in a lot of detail and it takes a full day to do this. So I will not be able to do justice by trying to do this here over a few minutes. So I'll give you a few key pointers, okay? First of all, one of the reasons why I say try to revise from at least three sources, try to at least do one source which is online, that's because I want you to get familiar. I want you to familiarize yourself with the different question styles. And you'll find that different sources seem to have a slight different emphasis on the type of questions um, they use or the kind of gravity or the difficulty of the questions. Again, I find that varies between different revision sources. So that's why I recommend multiple sources, at least three over a 10 week period and familiarize yourself with the various um, different styles of questions. Remember, you will not have a physical calculator on the day. So Another thing to do is familiarize yourself with online calculator. So if you, for example, from a book, if you revise from a book, if you, uh, you know, revise online, always use the online calculator on your laptop or your computer. That way you're more used to using the mouse to uh, work on the calculator rather than, you know, digital, using the fingers to use a physical calculator. It's just another trick I find that saves valuable seconds. Okay. Now, you ask me about official um, UCAT site, okay? Uh, many students ask me that, is that enough? Um, you know, is that good enough or should I even refer to it? Um, and I'll tell you wholeheartedly, I think the official uh, UCAT site is really good. Um, they give you some really good guidance. They give you some examples of questions. So by all means, uh, use that as your initial points of guidance and source of information. Make sure you do that. It's um, really useful to do that, to get a broad understanding of what the UCAT test is about. Is it enough? Uh, no, of course it's not. It is not enough. To think that you can just read a few things and a few sections in the UCAT site and go and test yourself and then, you know, you'll be fine. Impossible. I don't think it will work unless you're a genius. Uh, most of us aren't. Okay, if you are a genius, good for you. Okay. Um, now, as you know, there is certain amount of maths involved in the UCAT. So how about doing some revision in some basic math skill, especially for those of us who are doing um, A level or equivalent where maths isn't being done anymore. So you've done it for GCSE, for example, you've done it uh, in other uh, like international baccalaureate or something where, you know, now you're not doing maths anymore. So some of us can fall out of practice and we can forget some basic math skills. So my advises revise your math skills GCSE maths I mean there's lots of free online sources you can use to do some mental arithmetic work and learn some basic GCSE maths again all right that's a very useful thing to do it will speed up the way you think in the quantitative section and I in fact I um, almost insist that the blue peanut students do that uh, prior to coming to the day course that I do with them okay some of my students get a bit nervous about timings quite often when they've come to our early courses. They'll say, I can't do it on time. It's taking me ages. It's taking me ages. Um, and look, I'm telling them that don't worry too much about it. When you start off doing anything, you'll be slow. You're not going to have a good feel for times. Don't worry about it. The main thing is quality. Okay. Do the questions, repeat the questions, practice the questions over time as practice makes perfect, not only will you be answering well and understanding the question, you're also going to get quick at it, okay? Negative marking. Now, again, some people ask me that, and I'm sure you'll be very pleased to know, there are no negative marking. There's no trick questions here. They do not deduct points for wrong answers, okay? So that's why I say, look, have a guess. If you don't know an answer, just guess, okay? 
Do not leave a blank answer. In fact, I tell my students in the Blue Peanut courses, if you do that, don't even talk to me again. I'll be really upset with you if you do that. Never leave blank answers, okay? If you can't work something out, you're really struggling, another strategy to use is elimination, okay? Now, let's say there's four STEM answers. Well, eliminate the two that you're pretty sure won't be the answer. And then you've got two answers left to dither over and even then, when you don't know which one it is, your guesstimate there will be better than kind of looking at four answers together and, you know, kind of confusing yourself over things, okay? Remember, you can allow you to do something called flag and review. That is, if you do not know the answer to a question and you want to just flag it and move on to the next, you can do that. And I would say to you, do not ever stick around and mull over and kind of waste time over a question that you're not sure about. Flag it, move on. You can always come back. Sometime with fresh eyes, you know, mind's a bit more sharper when you come back. You can refocus on a question. The answer becomes more obvious. So do not, do not waste time just looking at a question. It's not just gonna come like that, okay?